This is Unwind Your Mind Back to God Written by David Hofmeister and read by Tarana Singh In today's episode, we continue the transfer of training with Book 3. In Chapter 1, these are Sections 12 and 13. Section 12 Help Releasing Fantasies Hi, David. Thank you for forwarding the messages on to me and the kind help you and your friends are offering. What seems to underlie much of my distress is a crushing sense of loneliness, incompleteness and inadequacy. My life is a picture of never-ending poverty, loneliness, isolation, failure, guilt and fear. It is very difficult to have a quiet mind in the midst of this as I have this desperate need to feel at one, connected, loved, and I am very much aware how my mind gets its feeling of oneness and creativity from its relationship to its thoughts. A kind of substitute for the real thing because the real thing is unavailable and because the emotions are so horrible to live with. I have been totally unable to form stable relationships with women or hold down a job due to all this stuff and have therefore sought solace in spiritual ideals. However, the utter failure of my spiritual seeking has made me wonder whether it was all just a cover-up for my emotional mess. Up until a couple of years ago, I had told myself all this spiritual stuff about being a holy son of God, etc. and had managed to live on the energy of my spiritual idealism, though not on the real energy of connectedness, and hoped that enlightenment might be just around the corner or even now. That was until I became painfully aware of my emotional desperation, through an experience of unrequited love. Since then, I have sunk into increasing disillusionment with all things spiritual. I am left craving and fantasizing about living with a beautiful woman in a beautiful cottage in the highlands of Scotland, not spiritual enlightenment. It just seems that I have been deceiving myself about wanting it. Yet I know all too well just how hopelessly unfulfillable my fantasies are, since they are based on the very lack that prevents them from ever having the possibility of being fulfilled. Of course, if the lack were resolved and I did feel connected and at one and loved, then I would not need these worldly substitutes. But that just seems impossible at least not without some unimaginable trauma to push one over the other side, which is also cruel and which is one reason why I hate the spiritual process so much. Something in me hangs on to the idea that there must be a better way, but I am utterly at loss. Beloved one, the ego judges your experiences as failure yet still the inner wisdom comes shining through as evident in the following words. I know all too well just how hopelessly unfulfillable my fantasies are as they are based on the very lack which prevents them from ever having the possibility of being fulfilled. Of course, if the lack were resolved and I did feel connected and at one and loved then I would not need these worldly substitutes. You hang on to the idea that there must be a better way and there is. What the ego judges as loss is truly gain, for the world is backwards and upside down. What the ego judges as failure is truly success. The ego seems to offer substitutes for reality, and seems to thrive from its relationship to its thoughts. But illusions have no reality, 
and the ego is not real. It is not wise to identify with an illusion and you need not do so. As it dawns that the ego has nothing to offer, there is no need to follow its advice or seek after its substitutes. The ego's self-concept seems to be crumbling and now the spirit offers forgiveness as its replacement. Is this not an exchange you would gladly make if you realized it offers only happiness and fulfillment? Spiritual seeking ends in finding stillness, for in stillness there is nothing to seek for. To the ego, stillness is death. Yet, knock on the door of stillness and it will open. You are spirit and the beauty and glory God created as one forever. Vision is a replacement for every misperception. The body's eyes and ears see not and hear not. Do not accept false witnesses that would deny the glory of the eternal spirit. You are not a failure, beloved one. Trials are but lessons repeated. So mistakes about time may be released forever. The ego judges awakening as cruel, for it feels threatened by reality. Reality has no opposite. The only question which seems to remain is one of identity. The self God created as one remains invulnerable. The attraction of love leaves awakening inevitable and entirely unavoidable. This is the good news. And finally now for the last and final section of Chapter 1 of Book 3. Section 13. Wait on Nobody. The Kingdom of Heaven is Now. There is one step of surrender to be experienced to know the kingdom of heaven as oneself. Wait on no body. Cause and effect are simultaneous, not separate. Salvation from illusions is immediate. There is no gap between God and Christ. This is the end of the illusion of linear time. Our only task, therefore, is to accept and receive atonement now, in this moment, as an opening to the experience of God and divine grace. One cannot step from fear to love unless they see the results of such a choice. When there seems to be a weight, there is an apparent denial of our reality. Yet must this be impossible, for reality remains real and is unchanged by the illusion of denial. Rest assured, if there is any body for whom you are waiting to get it, you have limited what you are willing to give, willing to receive and willing to demonstrate to the world. It is in giving that one receives. Present giving is natural to the Christ, for Christ is given life by God's eternal giving and extends the gift forever. You are the only one holy child of God. You are the one holy child of God. Such is the simple truth. Rejoice and be glad. End of chapter 1